Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It is so good to see you guys here again. I am Nick and welcome back to part three. Everybody's first reaction was, oh, their insurance company must be like, you hit a what? But in the state of Michigan, they have some funky laws and actually one of those funky laws and actually one of those funky laws had allowed her insurance not to pay out on this accident. That law is called no fault insurance. And what that means is that if you and I, the person watching this, get in an accident you have undeniable 4k proof that it's my fault i even call your insurance say it's my fault i tell the police it's my fault even in this case as long as it happened in michigan your insurance would take care of your car and my insurance takes care of my car i know seems like a bunch of bs so in other states, some of these insurance companies may fix your car while they're doing an investigation. And once they find that the other party is at fault, they'll go after the other insurance company for what's called reciprocity, which means they're gonna go after for the money that they paid out to fix your car, they're gonna go after that plus your deductible. In the state of Michigan, you can only go after your deductible or I believe there's another, I'm not exactly sure, but you can only go up to $3,000. Uh, but my, unfortunately my deductible is 500, which means uh, it's pretty much gone. And I'm sure the insurance company is gonna keep that anyways. So it's very unfortunate that it doesn't work like normal states. Thankfully, my representatives with my insurance company were really good to me and really nice. They helped me a lot of the steps of the way. They weren't shady like most of these insurance companies can be, especially with the expense on labor and parts on a lot of these on, on this car. Thankfully, I was able to choose my own body shop but this body shop that it went to you know obviously in the last video I told you that the previous owner had really good luck with them and good work coming out of a lot of his cars so obviously I can't trust the many shops here in Vegas any shops at all really so I had elected to get it fixed in the state of Michigan and then ship the car out here afterwards but we're not gonna get into that in this video we're gonna get into that in the next video so one thing I forgot to mention in the initial taping of this video, in the beginning, before my insurance would approve the claim on my McLaren, they had to do a thorough investigation. Because the car was so new, it was just picked up and it was just put on the policy. Uh, thankfully, I had the car on the policy about a week before I even transferred the money or picked the car up. So I did have it that amount of time. To me, that any car that was on their policy that got in an accident under 60 days has to go through an investigation, uh, which makes sense. So they wanted to make sure that it buy a car that was already crashed and that they was trying to make a claim on it or I was trying to do some type of insurance fraud or anything like that, uh, which really kind of threw me through a loop in the beginning just because if I was gonna do some type of insurance fraud, why wouldn't I just do my M3 or my R8 that were both on the policy for years prior to that instead of just going to get this and then doing it right away? That didn't make any sense to me. So that, so the investigator with the insurance company, he wasn't so nice like the other two guys that I had to deal with. Understand, he's in insurance. It's not a great and glamorous job. People don't normally call you to have a good day or anything like that. I actually had to provide my insurance with some evidence. I had to provide them the, with the bill of sale, the title. I even provided them my email transaction with the owner. And I even provided them the previous owner's ID, the information so they could call him if they needed to. I had to give them certain files off of my phone of the pictures, which included the metadata. So it would show them when the picture was taken, where the picture was taken, and all of that, like whose phone the picture was taken with. And I had to provide that from not only my phone, but my friend's phones who also had photos of the car before it was in the accident and stuff like that. They were also wondering why I was in Michigan and everything and if I could prove that I was there. So I had to send them my flight itineraries and my hotel receipts and all that just so that they could get the full picture and make sure that I wasn't committed fraud of any type. But regardless, obviously I haven't and they had proved the claim on the McLaren and it, as you can see behind me, it's sitting here fixed. So moving on to my citation. So the officer obviously gave me a citation which in my opinion wasn't warranted, pretty much says so in the police report. 
In the beginning, we first attempted to reach out to the officer who issued the citation, which he never returned any of the phone calls to my attorney, which, yeah, I, I mean, he doesn't have to, and that's all right. Um, but after about 10 days, we were able to view the police report with our own eyes, at which point we discovered that the police report did say that she lost control of her vehicle. Um, why I was issued the citation and she was issued nothing is beyond me. I have no idea. I have some type of an idea and because he saw what kind of car it was he saw oh it's a mclaren he might have had some type of type of prejudice against these cars or the owners of these cars or and you know he did say that i shouldn't be driving a car like this in the winter but regardless what happened had happened and like i said i should have requested to see his supervisor and just discontinued talking with him you know he wasn't really being so reasonable at the scene he didn't really ask my side of the story he just went off what he said and then just kind of re reiterated it and said yes so i didn't know where he was at until after the fact also him just telling me to fight it in court and fight it in court I didn't really know what to do uh, like i said it's my first accident I should have requested the supervisor. Unfortunately, I didn't, and uh, we did have to go fight it in court. So with the police report and the video I had of her speaking on the side of the road, uh, the current weather conditions, and I had an independent witness that was not interviewed by the cop, but, and that was because I was never asked if I had one, but my independent witness said he would be glad to testify in court. My attorney was confident that he could get this fully dismissed. So the state of Michigan went back and forth with my attorney and offered multiple deals, all of which will drop the charges down to a minor infraction with no points on my license. At which my attorney said that there would be no deal. And this is because they want to try to gain revenue for the state. They're trying to just get that 90 or 100 bucks out of my pocket because, oh, it's no points on the license. They'll forget about it. It's all good. We'll still get the little bit of cash and uh, we can use that for whatever we're going to use it for. But my attorney said no to any deal that they brought across the table and that they would be glad to go to trial because we were pushing for a full dismissal. In the end, the DA representative had saw that we had evidence on our side and then we were willing to go to trial, which uh, let's face it, none of these traffic tickets hardly ever get to trial. And that's something they didn't wanna waste time, resources on. After my attorney being so confident and standing his ground, they had fully dismissed the ticket, uh, which I'm grateful for. Um, I can't thank Mark enough. Uh, I had actually found him as part of one of my uh, groups that I'm in called Full Send Rally Planning. So what Full Send Rally Planning is, is this group of individuals across the United States who will really enjoy rallying. Everybody in there does something different, but the one thing that brines us together is the cars. So after I had posted the photos and everything and asking if anybody had a traffic attorney in Michigan, everybody had told me to go to Mark. Mark is a car enthusiast just like you and I. He really helped me out quite a bit. I I'm just really thankful that uh, I had somebody like him on my side and was able to understand from a car guy's perspective and understand what had happened. And not only just being car guy, but really understanding the law, but that's what his job is, right? He went to bat for me, he knocked it out of the park, and I'd be glad to use his services again if I had any infractions in the state of Michigan. But hopefully I'll never be driving a car like that in the state of Michigan again, just because of how big of a pain in the ass it was with the insurance. But Michigan is where I grew up. It's a beautiful state. I'd love to move back someday. So who knows, maybe it could happen again. I'm not gonna let something very small like that, no fault insurance law, stop me from moving to a state like that. So if you guys wanna find out more about what I had to go through to fix the car with insurance and the shop and everything like that, definitely make sure you subscribe to the page, follow, and uh, in the next video, we're gonna talk a lot more about that. If you like this video, hit that like button below, smash it if that's something you wanna do. Subscribe if you already haven't. We're gonna see you in the next video. Stay free, my friends.